All right, today is Saturday, January 7th, and I'm interviewing uh, Rutherford Strom Stromeyer. Right. All right. <laughs> All right. So, um, you were in the Navy, you said? In the Navy. In the Navy? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and uh, how old are you, like, your age? Well, I was out of high school. I was, uh, I think, Between, I was almost 19, 19? when I went in the service. Oh, that's awesome. 18 or something. And, um, I was quite young. Yeah. <clears throat> um, do you remember the Great Depression? Like, do you remember living in it? Oh, yes. I lived. Oh, yeah. I remember that well. Yeah, can you explain something about it? Like, how was it, what was it like to live? Well, it, to us, um, up in the, I lived up in the Adirondacks, and uh, there weren't many rich people up there anyway. Hmm. So most people were grew their own vegetables, had maybe a cow for the milk and stuff like that. Maybe a couple of pigs hmm. for the winter to kill and. You know, stuff like that, you were more, it wasn't like you were dependent on the supermarket someplace. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. So people were basically on their own anyway, you're saying? Right. right. People made their own bread. Mm -hmm. Did yes, this, you, you know, my mother I remember and my grandmother. <clears throat> and uh, it was a different type of life, but it was a good life. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. good. Uh, as long as you had a good home and love in the mm. home, you're yeah. you're in pretty good shape. Mm. Whether you got a lot of money or not. Yeah, that's a good way to think. Um, just moving on, where, where were you during December 7th, 1941? Where was I? Mm. I was at my home and my mother had some company in for dinner. It was on Sunday, wasn't it? December 7th. And we were eating dinner and we had the, uh, the radio was on very low. And somebody says, oh my God, who was seated quite near the radio. Uh, that's when we first heard about Pearl Harbor. We were eating Sunday dinner, and uh, oh, of course, that kind of put the key vibes on the dinner. Everybody was, you couldn't realize what the distance were, you know, and what that, what was, that was called a curtail, and um, but that was, I remember that very well. Just like it was yesterday. Mm. Yeah. Um. And then I never thought, I, then, then I knew, of course I graduated from high school and then there was the draft. I says, I'll, 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 I think I don't have to be looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> so you joined the Navy right after? Because you're like, really right. oh, that's great. So. Um, how how did it start? Like, can you explain like the process of joining the navy and getting in? Oh, I, uh, they had the draft then, mm -hmm. so I didn't even have. To, I, oh, so they just drafted. Uh, they got me before I even could think of <laughs> volunteering. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, my, my three brothers. I was the youngest, and I was the number one pick to go. <laughs> So I didn't have to work out there. Oh, they, they, convenient time. They lasted <laughs> me, and uh, yeah, that was quite a. And uh, <clears throat> went out to uh, the Finger Lakes for training for the boot camp for the Navy. Mm -hmm. And I was there about six weeks. 
And then I went to radio school and they to learn the code. And um, boy, that was a tough one, but I couldn't do it today, learn that code in six weeks. Oh, and how to, how to transmit it over the radio in the, from the ship, you know. But we did. And right after that, I got our orders to go pick up the ship to Sac in San Diego. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so went to San Diego and picked up a new destroyer escort. And um, went up the West Coast, I remember. It was rough. The sea was rough for all the coast. And <laughs> most of us got seasick. Oh, the, yeah, the waves. The rook ages it up. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and that went on for a while. And then we, we picked up ammunition up in. Uh, that was in Canada someplace. Then we picked up the uh, ammunition and then we just took off or stopped at Hawaii. And you know, just before we got to Hawaii, all of a sudden I felt better. <laughs> Thank God. Because <laughs> seasickness is no fun. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was never sick again. Oh, that's good. Got used to it early. Again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was terrible. I remember that in the older, we had a couple, maybe eight or ten that were really, been in the Navy. We called them the old timers. They were probably four, five years older than us. But anyway, I remember one time when we were all sick. Before we got to Pearl Harbor, they, you know what they do? They go into the kitchen. You get an old pork chop and put it on the string and drag it up the decks in front of the. <laughs> <laughs> that so wasn't they, very appetizing. <laughs> So basically they were trying to make you sick, but they didn't <laughs> We didn't laugh much. <laughs> it's funny now, it wasn't funny back then. You were so you were over the rail most of the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what does it sound like? Until you got over it. Mm. Oh, good way to get I remember story. copying, of course I was the original man, and I was copying gold and cream my legs. I, yeah, on the typewriter, yeah, had in Radio Shack. I had a bucket between what I ate when I got sick. <laughs> so basically, you were basically like mainly a radio man, you're saying? Like yes. Code communications, that type of thing? Right. And that was my day in, day out job. And all the time we were out there, um, you had four hours on, four hours off, right around the clock. So you'd get off and you could, like, if, if, if you were on for four to eight in the afternoon, late afternoons, well, you'd get off at eight and try to go to sleep. And usually it was some you didn't get right to sleep and before you knew it, were, you were being waking up for the next shift. Mm. So you got used to it though. Yeah. Because you're young and you're tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be. So um, can you explain like your trip to the Pacific? Like you fought in the Pacific, right? Mm -hmm. Did you fight in the Pacific? Did I? Uh, like go there anytime? Like go to the Pacific? Like oh my goodness, we were all over the Pacific. All over? Like can you... Yeah. Uh, for, well, until I was discharged. We were in at least seven invasions, mm -hmm. taken back the islands, like Iwo Jima. 
Oh, you were in Iwo Jima? Yes. Oh. We, were, we were right off the beach patrolling them. Because they, they had to have the, they had these two manned submarines. Mm -hmm. They would sneak them into a harbor. Just stuff like that. So we were always right in there. And we followed the carriers. Mm -hmm. Because it, when the planes come back, sometimes, the, quite often, a plane would be damaged or something was wrong or the uh, pilot might have been wounded slightly and he didn't have enough uh, reflexes to land, mm -hmm. they'd have to ditch the airplane mm -hmm. alongside the aircraft carrier. And we would go in, hell bent for election, fast as we could, and try to pick them up out of the plane before it sank. Mm. And most of the times we got them. That was tough. Awesome. Uh, what, what were your thoughts the first time you went into the Pacific, like started fighting in there? What were you thinking? Well, I remember the first time I. Um, the first island group we invaded was the Marshall Islands, mm -hmm. which was, a, oh, maybe a thousand miles southwest of Pearl Harbor, or Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And um, I was on duty in the radio shack, and I heard all this gunfire. <laughs> and of course, I, there was no windows in the radio shack. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see a thing. And I said, that's got to be gunfire, I said. Either somebody's shooting at us or we're shooting at somebody. <laughs> yeah, when I finally got off, off the duty, we were right next to a battleship that had been shelling the island for to set the troops in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> so, right about a, before the next invasion, we were in seven of these different, like Iwo Jima, Formosa, Guam. They had to, they had to be all taken back because they were all occupied by the Japanese. Yeah. And then each one was a separate. So that's, this went on for two years. So you were in, I'm just going to list them, you were in the Marshall Islands, and you were in Iwo Jima, and you were in Guam? Guam, um, Formosa. Formosa? Different ones. Seven, there were seven of them. We got on our service, the P Pacific, you know, the things you wore on your chest. Mm -hmm. That had seven uh, invasion stars on it. So I was in, we were on our ship, we were in seven. Mm -hmm. And also one just before. Uh, the war ended, the fleet was all ready to go for the invasion of Japan mm -hmm. until they dropped the atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. And we, and the Japanese didn't surrender for, for the first one. They had to drop another one on Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. And that finally, they decided they were beaten. So we gave up and we went, I remember, uh, going into the harbor of Tokyo. We were right behind the battleship New Jersey and uh, going into the harbor. I looked and you could see this trolley car like running along the beach in the harbor, mm -hmm. and they had, a, look, they had a 
white flag flying that a pole up in the front of this little trolley. And I said, that's straight out is something. I wish I had a camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're just like, wow, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so was that I don't know where, what the trolley was doing, but it was, I never forgot that. So was that like the first time you realized they surrendered? Yeah. Or was that when you knew absolutely? Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Now, um, what are your what is your opinion about the atomic bombs? Because there's a lot of debates. Do you think it was right, or do you oh, necessarily? Well, you know, I I I wouldn't have I wouldn't have won, been the one. I would have hate to have been the one. The final word on that, mm -hmm. because it was an awful decision. If you said, no, 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 we can't use that bomb. You gotta. That would have the, the Japanese would have. Their women would have been armed. Mm -hmm. Everybody, they would have fought till. As, they were tenacious. Mm -hmm. But uh, Harry Truman was president, and he made the decision that you would. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be saving any lives if you didn't drop the bomb. Mm -hmm. Because they would, not only would a good bunch of our troops be killed, but a lot of the Japanese would be killed too. A lot more. Yeah, but it was a that. terrible thing to drop that bomb. I wouldn't. I, I, I don't think I could have made the decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was. It was. Yeah. It was two bad things. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. to make that decision. Yeah. So basically, you think it was like necessary, but you still but, bad you know, at the same time. Uh, it, it just, in, some, in some way, I wish it never. The whole theory of nuclear arms and even nuclear power now is dangerous, as you as we see in Japan, where they had that terrible uh, flooding. Yeah. And it killed a lot of people. Radiation mm -hmm. leaking from the plant. Yeah. But, uh, no. Today they're, they're a little reluctant to build too many more of them, I think. Yeah, it's just, it's just so complicated to right. decide. <laughs> mm. it's, it's wonderful, but it's, if it's out of control, it's not wonderful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whereas if you've got a one run by oil or or uh, water power or something, that's the way to go if you can do it. Mm -hmm. Wind, solar. Yeah, like natural. That's the, sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's, it, yeah, that's the way to go. That's the future. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I was out, uh, and I think the two years I was on that ship for a little over two years, two and a half years almost. Mm -hmm. And uh, we only had one three day leave. When we went in, we had a uh, we were depth charging a submarine mm -hmm. and uh, something happened, whether we'll never know, but uh, our bottom of our ship hit the sub, whether the sub was trying to get up or what, I don't know, and it bent the uh, 
drive shaft that drives the propellers. Mm -hmm. So we had to go back to uh, Pearl Harbor to get it fixed. So we went back and uh, they put us up in this beautiful hotel, the crew, for three days. Oh, that's nice. It was, oh, we didn't know how to act. <laughs> it's kind of unexpected in your age. And uh, then they, they, in the three days, they got it all repaired, and out back we went. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, it was, uh, I saw a lot. Some of it I don't like to remember. Mm -hmm. But you see, so. But one thing I will tell you: it was either Guam or Mariana Islands, right in that same group, that the Japanese knew they were on the way out. And there was a cliff on the back side of this island. And we were, well then I'm ahead of my story. Long before that I had my battle station had been, I had been changed to Captain's Docker, which was on the bridge, open bridge up at the, you know, the, the highest part of the ship. Mm -hmm. And one day, one day I got a, it was a call over the radio system, Strober, I want to see you in the office. It was the captain. I said, oh my God, what are I haven't done anything with it. <laughs> and so, then he says, I want you to be my talker. And I says, oh. And I knew it was quite, quite a, and he says, oh, don't worry about it. You'll get, you pick it up pretty quick. And I did, and that's where, whenever it was uh, the gong went off for a battle station, I would be relieved and go up to the bridge. Mm. And that was it, because then I could see what was going on. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. What, what exactly did you see? Like what? Oh, what I saw was... a lot of stuff. Some <laughs> of it I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, one, one thing, especially, we were behind, right, not far offshore, and I looked up on these ledges, and I see, my God, I says, that uh, looks like up, well, all women and children up there. And you know what it, what it was? What they were doing? I seen the Jap mothers with their babies in their arms jumping off the cliff. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe And I said to the captain, do you see that? And he says, oh my God, yes. Mm -hmm. Down to mm -hmm. Rather than see their, their husbands, they would fight to the Tenacious. They were so tenacious. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. stuff like that, it's not nice. No. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. And, but uh, I was fortunate. I survived mm -hmm. all of it. You gotta, you gotta come to your blessings sometime. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, were you ever wounded? Like, did you ever get hit by anything? Or? Oh, yeah. But not much. We were a fortunate ship. Hmm. We were right next to one destroyer, the, the, the kamikazes. Hmm. That's when we, we got a star for that, too. We were... Uh, that was something to 
they had volunteers lined up waiting to fly these pet older planes that they had loaded with bombs into these ships. And of course, what the major ones they wanted to knock out was the aircraft carriers and the battleships was their main target. Mm. Which was what you were, right? Yeah, you were right. Carrier, and so. <laughs> so we were, we, well, sometimes it would be 200 ships in the fleet. And uh, I remember the one aircraft carrier that hit right beside us. Well, not right beside us, but right within a few hundred yards of us. And uh, immediately their fuel tanks t caught fire and, um, and I can still see the... Ooh, it's terrible. And they had uh, look, look, little bulldozers on the decks pushing all their ship or all their planes off. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, at uh, when this happened, there, just before that, a flight of their planes had taken off from the deck. Now there's no place to land. <laughs> so we had did would did the best we could about six of destroyers trying to pick up the the cruiser's plane. Mm. That's crazy. Sometimes you were successful and sometimes you were too late. Mm. That was that was bad. Mm. So and <clears throat> well, there's so many different things that uh, I've uh, run over so much of it in my mind. Once in a while, at night, if you can't sleep, still even now, mm -hmm. after all those years, there's a, something will come up, and, and I can't get it out of my mind. But. Uh, It was enough. It was a great experience, but I wouldn't want to go through it. And then, yeah. <laughs> then we lost the. We lost three destroyers in a typhoon when we were going in to take the Philippine Islands back. Mm -hmm. um, that was. I remember the dates: December seventeenth, nineteen forty-four. That was that typhoon. It was the strongest uh, winds ever recorded at sea, and it, it capsized three destroyers and uh, took the bow sections off a aircraft carrier and off one battleship and two cruisers and. The three destroyers that sank, there was about 750 men aboard, there was 40 survivors because the typhoon was so terrific. Oh, that's crazy. You, 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 wouldn't, uh, you didn't drown from the depth of the water, you drowned from just the the ferocity of the sea above, <laughs> right mm. on the surface. Oh, that's nice. God. Mm. That was something that you almost wake up sweating when you dream about that one. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> so, um, you spent two years, you said, on this carrier. I'm like, the, on the carrier? On the destroyer. On the I'm sorry, on this destroyer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how how was it? Did you get tired of it really quick, or did you get used to you know being you know not on land, being on sea all for that long? Well, no. I uh, you know when you're 
course, you're a young man, which mm -hmm. is a great advantage yeah. for something like that. And um, you just do it. You do mm -hmm. try to do the best you can. And um, that's the only way a ship could keep going. If you know, you you do it for each other. Yeah. You don't do it for your country or all that patriotism or this yeah. that. You do it to save your old deck and my body's neck. Mm -hmm. That's why you do it. Yeah. <laughs> or keep up my chip at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all this patriotism and flag waving, that's, that's all right. But when it comes right down to it. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, did you hear? Like about your family back home, did you hear from them and did you? Well, yes, my mother and of course after a while my three brothers were in the service too. So they were all over different places. <clears throat> but uh, my mother used to write me quite, quite very frequently. Mm -hmm. In fact, every time we pulled into some place I'd I could be sure I'd have one letter from her anyway. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I remember one one time she hadn't heard from me in a long time. And I didn't know, of course, and she got one letter finally from me that was half burned. And that <laughs> Did that scare her? Well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, I didn't know. And <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I often was thinking she probably didn't sleep good lots of nights worrying about her boys. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's... Um, alright, let's go. So, uh, yeah, you said that World War II was a defining moment for you. It was like you were glad that you had the experience, basically? Yes. But... Um, uh, it, was, it was something to live through. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't want to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because... Yep. <clears throat> the odds would be against you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I was... In fact, we lost the fuel off our ship in that typhoon. I guess about every ship did. Because the whole fleet was disassembled and we were going right in for the... put the troops ashore take the Philippine Islands back. <clears throat> and that delayed that invasion for about a month mm. till the, they could get the other, some of the ships repaired and stuff like that. And then I remember when we finally went in, we were right in shore, of course, where on the invasion just where we would be, right in where them little subs, they used to like bring in them little subs. And uh, of course they could go places that uh, a big one couldn't go. And they were almost like a suicide craft, mm -hmm. like the kamikaze planes. Yeah. Yeah, about yes. that same, same thing. Yeah, so basically they just kind of didn't care, like as long as they got the job done, it's basically. Mm hmm? Like, so basically the kamikaze planes and like, yeah. sometimes they just, as long as they got the that job right. done. Right, kamikazes. Ooh. At one time we went and made a, before the invasion, we thought we were going to have to invade, so they wanted to you know, soften the beaches up over where they were going to land. So we set the whole fleet up there. 
and I think there was six aircraft carriers. They come out with these kamikazes and I, I think they sank one aircraft carrier and damaged an awful lot of other ships. Mm -hmm. Human, human bombs is what it, <laughs> <laughs> what it came down to. <laughs> it took, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, how was the weather there? Like, you talked about typhoon, you know, and that type of thing, but how was the rest of it? Like, was it cold? Was it hot? Oh, was it was it... beautiful. Mm -hmm. Once you got used to the, what was it, you know, down around like the Philippine Islands in that area, the real South Pacific, it was, it would be very uh, humid. But you got used to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and of course, one ship, one thing about being on a ship, there was always a breeze. Because you were moving along 18, 20 knots or so. So there was a nice little breeze and hmm. it wasn't bad. But to, to sleep down below deck was another thing because Of course, you had to get refueled at sea and bring in all these big hoses from the tanker ship to your ship. You'd get this awful smell of diesel mm -hmm. for quite a while after that refueling. And, uh, so right outside the radio shack there is a, what we call the the Liberty deck, just a small little deck, about twice the size of this table maybe. And so I, one day I asked the captain, I says, would it be all right if uh, I was to sleep on that deck night? Well, yes, I guess with one condition. I said, well, what would that be? He says, if you put a rope around your ankle and tie it to something pretty sturdy on the deck, because I don't want to <laughs> roll over. <laughs> Watching it white over. <laughs> so we used to sleep out in the deck, three or four, three of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, it's beautiful. So, boy, if I could go out there and after your four hour watch, like at midnight, and I'd be asleep in no time. That's <laughs> <laughs> just nuts. Um, did you hear any about anything that was going on in Europe? Like, did you have any communication with anyone? Well, we 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 did hear some things, yes. But of course, you didn't have the all our uh, the only you got a little tired of copying code. It was twenty four hours a day that went. It was out of pure out of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. it originated. That was the fleets and uh, <clears throat> it's, it's unbelievable but that but this that cold went on for twenty four hours never ending. Mm -hmm. We you know, because there was set so many hundreds of ships out there. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it got it was a very monotonous thing, but it had to be done. It was the only communications system you had. Mm -hmm. uh, what types of stuff did you hear? Like just the main points of what was going on, or 
You mean in the rest of the world, or? Yeah, with the rest of the world, you know. Well, yeah. once in a while, we, somebody gets a newspaper from home, but it was old. It probably wasn't much current news. Mm. But it's like, <laughs> yes, gotcha. Yeah, and uh, I remember my what what was my mother? We had a in North Creek, which was a neighboring village of ours where I lived. They had a weekly paper, and it was a it was a whole town one of them little small town papers, and my mother used to send it to me once in a while, and I got a kick out of it that was was all stuff you know we were you knew about you know. Mm -hmm. Or the people you know and from the area and the rest of the guys used to Oh my god for that's a newspaper <laughs> They couldn't believe it. <laughs> and that I think at that time it had a listing on the front page of all the communities that served. <laughs> 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 so, oh. that was a that was a joke to them. If you mentioned New York, they thought you were from New York mm -hmm. City. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they didn't know even the there was a such a thing as the Adirondacks. Yes, I am. <laughs> Most of them, no. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, um, do you remember anyone else you worked with, like your buddies? Do you remember? Oh them? yes. Mm -hmm. I had some good, no, I had f three good friends right in the radio shack. Then one of them was <clears throat> a nice, nice Jewish guy, and he was a married man, and uh, he had two small children, and he, he got picked up in the draft. Just before he mm -hmm. hit the turn of yeah. shut off age, mm. and uh, he was a we we well he was almost he was about six seven years older than I was, and he kind of took care of me too. Mm. <laughs> it was like a more like a father to me, <laughs> and. Uh, and I had two good friends, one from Brooklyn, and uh, yeah, I had some good friends, which helped a lot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's good. Um, <laughs> so how close did you come to the enemy? Like the Japanese, were you, like was being on that bridge the closest you were, like physically to them? Yes. Three. When the uh, and then uh, one one time this was during the Marshall Island, the, the first one we were at. Uh, we were right in the first group going in, and uh, we saw this. Smaller, it was like a, uh, I don't know what you would call it, a small cruiser. Uh, like, almost like something you'd see on Lake George, one of them big pleasure boats going out. And uh, so the skipper took off, uh, took after it, you know, just out of And uh, on it was the, uh, commander of the whole area and he was trying to get to the next get away to the next island group because he knew that one was was no more yeah and so we we tagged right on and got almost up to him and you won't believe this he stood on the deck 
and committed Harry Carey. Mm -hmm. Rather than be Maybe captured. captured. Yeah. And sometimes I think, was that real? Mm -hmm. You know? To see something like that. Yeah, like, what, what just happened? Uh -huh. So you're kind of like, what just happened? Like, yeah. yeah. Mm, that's nuts. I am just going to. What mm. well, would have been miserable without him? You know. Yeah. And of course, there was no. No place to go. <laughs> <laughs> so you you went to sea <laughs> <laughs> and find out where you get in trouble. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, did you choose to be in the navy, like, or did they tell you to? Well, no, you? I chose to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. yeah. What made you choose the navy other than the army or the air force? Right. Or? Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I remember when the same time I went, there was a guy with me. Well, I knew him real well, and oh my God, he was so disappointed. He tried to get in the Air Force, mm -hmm. and uh, he didn't make it because he says, "Oh God, I love that mule farms at the Air Force." <laughs> you know, that's how he was thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's not. <laughs> So, what made you decide the Navy over? <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe it was just to uh, be something new. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And, uh, but it was, I, it was, uh, it was an education pretty quick. And lots of things. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, oh well, Even we had a, a, oh, a wonderful captain. He was, uh, he was great. So I enjoyed, well I didn't enjoy the battle stations, but, uh, it was the, uh, he was easy to work with. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, when I, when I did go on, when the, the, the gong went off, you were, dropped everything you had and you, as soon as the guy come in to relieve you, you were up the ladder to the bridge and first thing you had to do was contact all the different places on the ship to see if they were ready, you know. Mm -hmm. and that was a routine. And once I learned that and this and the other thing, it would come easy because it was just automatic. You, know, you knew what you had to do and you did it. And, So, um, how do you feel about the Japanese today? Like, do you have any opinion on them? Oh, the well, song? you know, when the, when, for a long time when I first got back, uh, I wouldn't buy anything even remotely resembling if it was made in Japan. Mm -hmm. But now I've got over that. I don't, mm -hmm. but for a little, quite a while ago, I got over that. And uh, I figure those poor people had suffered enough too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The war is no good for anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I often wonder what does it all accomplish? Oh, like the war like, in general? What, what does it accomplish? Or? Or, I mean, uh, what, what does it uh, look at like a, now? Uh, 
the young men and women we've lost in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Almost 5,000 killed, and we leave, and they're fighting among themselves now, killing them among themselves. Mm -hmm. So, I figure we didn't do much good, mm -hmm. and it's a terrible thing. Five. Mm -hmm. Killed, 5,000 almost killed, and 30,000 wounded just for Iraq. Mm -hmm. And what it is accomplishing, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Same as Afghanistan there now. We're still there. I don't think we're going to. Mm -hmm. It's tough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you believe all in all that World War II was necessary? Like, do you, was that a war that should have been fought, do you think? Or? Well, that was different. That was good. Here we were, were, Britain was almost on their knees mm -hmm. from the bombings from Germany, from this, from that. And if they had got Britain, if the Germans had it. Between them and Russia, and Japan on the other side, the current war on. Yeah. If we hadn't got in and saved Britain, the Germans would have been right over. Never, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Russians, one of them would have had. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That was that. I think that was a necessary move. Mm -hmm. no, no other mm -hmm. solution. Mm -hmm. No, that was it. Mm -hmm. Or depend on. There wouldn't have been another any United States mm -hmm. if they'd won. If they'd won. Yeah, they would just kept going, you know. <laughs> right. Crazy. How do you feel about Russia and about like the Cold War right after and all that? Well, that was a they were pretty feisty, <laughs> very feisty. That was a tough, tough, very tough time, wasn't it? You never, you never knew what the. And especially once they got a hold of the atomic bomb, you didn't know. We all had these silos built and with the, the ballistic missiles in them and all ready to go. It's just <laughs> so somebody pushed the button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, that was, oh. Mm -hmm. Scares you just to think of it now. Mm, yeah. That's not terrible. Mm. <laughs> so like you said when the war ended, well when it went to the Japanese surrendered and you saw the white flag. And then what happened after that, I guess? So I'm well, saying like did you go home right after or No, we we had to we had to stick around in the harbor there. We were there when they signed the uh Surrender on the battleship New Jersey. They had the ceremony there in the harbor. Then, then we left <coughs> there, even though the war was over. They sent us up, up to the in the to the China Sea because they th thought that some uh, some one was still laying these mines up in there. Mm -hmm. So we went up there and with a minesweeper. They cut the, what they, these huge mines for just, they drop them and there's a cable on them. And mm -hmm. his mine cutter 
cuts the cable and brings them to the surface and our job was to explode them, get rid of them. And uh, here, here we are, which is pretty ticey business. I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's I wasn't too comfortable, I don't think I ever had a ship was either. And after, I mean, nothing stopped to think the war was over, here we are, up here, playing with mines. <laughs> <laughs> but that night I happened to be on duty. It was 12 to 4 shift. And I see this message coming, I could, I looked at the uh, heading of the message and I could see it was something we would be interested in because the message heading wasn't coded. It was our call signals for each of our ships in the unit. So I says, I better get that right up to the captain, quick. And he decoded it, the message, and it was, it was uh, the message sending us home. So, as soon as he got it, he decoded, he got it on the uh, public, you know, service, so the whole ship would know. And that was, then we were up in the China Sea there, and we were glad to get away from that mine. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would get blown up after the war ended. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what did you do after you got home? Like, what was your Ooh. plans? What did? <laughs> uh, 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 well, the plan was to have some, some fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've got two years. <laughs> uh, you've been gone so long. So long. <laughs> Three years, nothing, you know, no nightlife or nothing. <laughs> Dancing, nothing. <laughs> so you gotta make up for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that was. <laughs> I tell you, it was certainly. Nice to be home, though, after that. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, is there any other memorable stuff that you want to discuss? Is there any? Well, there probably is. All right. Is but, uh, the. Uh, it's just that the, it's amazing when you when you th think back about the crew of the ship, how they work together mm -hmm. so well. I think half the reason they did because they had a good captain. Mm -hmm. It made a difference. And, uh, I remember one time. Uh, if we had a, a new, uh, well, he'd be almost an assistant captain come aboard. And uh, nobody liked him. Mm -hmm. And he was a, well, he was causing an awful lot of. Frustration in the crew. And the word got to the captain that we don't like him. I wish you would get rid of him. And uh, next time we pulled in the port, he was left someplace. <laughs> 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 The captain got the message. <laughs> <laughs>
and he acted on it. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Mm. Um. So I'm sorry. I'm just gonna. <laughs> Um, oh, do you find it hard to watch documentaries today about the war? Like when you see anything about World War II on TV or anything, do you, um, do you find it hard to watch or? Uh, I don't like to watch some things, no. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. uh, like these, uh, some of these, uh, even the movies, some of them were brutal in their killings and like that. I, I can't stand that. Mm -hmm. uh, no. But anything that's. Well, I'm not, I'm not a. Uh, you can't be that way too far because there is a, there is so much of it in the world but uh, I don't like it yeah, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. and I don't I wouldn't turn it on if I do was that I, I was going to be presented something like that and I would I just wouldn't do it mm -hmm. <laughs> Makes sense. so I don't know how was the food in the Food? Military. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> like in the Navy. Oh. Was. <laughs> Is that what they call it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> uh, well, it was pretty slim. Let's just put it this way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the uh, for the for, for the of course you us. Uh, the destroyers didn't have the facilities that an aircraft carrier has. Mm -hmm. You know, the freezers or the anything. In fact, uh, we had hot, hot water for the kitchen, stuff like that. But if, mm -hmm. when you took a shower, you didn't, there was no hot water. Mm -hmm. It was seawater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh. <laughs> you never did get really clean. <laughs> yeah, you shower with salt water. And <laughs> <laughs> but, because uh, <clears throat> they didn't have the facilities to heat. Of course, we did have enough, uh, was a, had to have enough for drinking water, mm -hmm. but not enough for showers. Cause they just didn't have room on the ships, smaller ships or stuff like that. Or you, did, you didn't have the refrigeration for food, the freezers or stuff. You ate what? Uh, powdered, uh, powdered hamburger? Mm. Uh, powdered eggs? Mm. Yeah. So basically the powdered food was just you pour water in it and yeah. cook it? Was that what it was? Mm. <laughs> we, had, we had some names for the dishes they used to serve us. They weren't very nice, but <laughs> they were very explicit. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you say some of them or are they too Shit explicit? Shit, I should get for them. That was the special day. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> yeah, that was the specialty. <laughs> a ground up hamburger, dehydrated hamburger with a little hot water on it, made the gravy and the and the toast. <laughs> <laughs> <That's nuts. laughs> you don't know. You're not going to record that, are you? Oh, I can, I can leave. Yeah, no, I can leave. I'll oh, yeah, see, I don't know mine. I don't know mine. There's a few others. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mm. 
And these didn't have any like fresh juices or nothing. The only thing you had once in a while, it had the canned mm -hmm. uh, grape, grapefruit juice. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it was so bitter. <laughs> No, uh. mm. Mm. no I, I wouldn't. Uh, it was a nice cruise, but I would. I didn't like the <laughs> food. <laughs> <laughs> Well, any, anything else you would like to well, talk about? No, I'm awful glad you. Uh, I enjoyed your company. Oh, thanks. I was glad to hear right. your stories. <laughs> so, anything? Do you have anything that you remember that you'd like to make notable in, during the war? Or? Well. There was lots of things when I, I remember uh, when I'm talking about General MacArthur, mm -hmm. um, when he, right at the beginning of the war, the Japanese had Gregador and uh, that had surrendered. Our troops are, were just, they had to surrender. And anyway, they sent a special ship, a boating or sub, and picked up MacArthur and brought him to California or Australia, mm -hmm. out of harm's way. And the rest of them went on that terrible march that a lot of them died. The prisoners, the Japs took prisoners, and I know one guy who was right in the area where I lived, that he, he died on that march, getting them to some place, to mm -hmm. some kind of a prison. Mm -hmm. oh, was that the Bataan march? Yeah, there? Bataan. Bataan? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, we happened to be in shore on the first wave of the troops were then to take the Philippines back. Mm -hmm. And this other ship pulled up and the, we saw this man getting in the, they were loading this man in the boat and taking them in shore and just before they got to the beach, it probably about full of water. Mm -hmm. Guess who it was they were dropping off? MacArthur okay. had come okay. up from <laughs> <laughs> the, the troops never liked them. Mm -hmm. After that he they brought him in and he took he rolled his pants up and waved to the shore the last few feet. Mm. MacArthur has returned the yeah, headlines yeah. or in some... <laughs> well, oh. I, that's a wonder if the, they did there did he shot him before he got ashore. Well, it was awful nice, so I, I enjoyed oh, yeah, it. Thank you all. Just, so, do you have anything else to add? or? Well, that's about, I could probably go out for, <laughs> but you think it's think it so much, and then the, kind of, you, you kind of, you have to get revved up a little bit. Yeah, to you get know what I mean? And, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, and then you simmer down. <laughs> yeah, and then you're kind of. <laughs> <laughs> the next, for time. next time.
Mm. That makes sense. All right, so we'll just kind of turn this uh, over.